Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Artebeg 10, the 2022 release of it. Retail pricing on it about $52 to $55. It is still bottled at 46% ABV, 92 proof as it always has been. And for comparison's sake, I decided, you know what? I have a 2007 Artebeg 10 on the shelf and let's go ahead and just do a little comparison. Uh, Again, retail price on the 2007 back in the day was about $35, $39, so it hasn't jumped up dramatically. So again, same ABV, same everything, and so we're just going to do that side by side. All right, now, if you're out there and you're in a store and you see a bottle of Artebeg, whether it's in the box or on the bottle, um, and you're not sure of the vintage, what you can do is just turn them around, pull it out of the box, look around this little dimple that they have. Uh, some of them will be... They're going to be laser etched right around there, sometimes even over the dimple. But it always starts with an L, and the next two digits are going to be the year. So this is an L07. This is an L22. All right? All right. So here we go, starting with the 22 edition of Ardbeg 10 on the nose. I get that lemon oil right away. Vanilla is pretty bright. It is fairly smoky, but more into a barbecue smoke. Not some um, barbecue. It's, yeah, it's like a, it's barbecue, not necessarily hickory, not necessarily mesquite. But there's almost like a barbecue sauce element to the nose. Fruit-wise, a little black, I would call it a little... I guess what it is is actually cherry and plum caramelized. There's a little bit of that hint of sourness to the fruit. There is an herbal component. Almost like a little bit of like a lemon balm, eucalyptus, that element in here. The brine that I'm picking up on the nose trying to it definitely has like when you're at the ocean and you see those ocean pebbles those ocean rocks it has that kind of element on the nose maybe even a little bit of a sea kelp so there's a good amount of brine here it's not super heavy into like the smoked fish element anything like that because the peat stays relatively clean other than that kind of barbecuey smoke element The wood on it is younger. I would call it a little more of the fresh timber. There is an aromatic oak or an aromatic wood to it. It's a combination almost like when you're in that lemon balm eucalyptus, but then it starts transitioning into a pinion wood, almost cedar, not quite, but it's an aromatic wood. And I'm going to go with pinion wood on this. Very, very nice. Okay, I'm going to reset here with some coffee beans. Okay, now we're going to do the 07, 2007 Artebeg 10. Oh my goodness. Huge difference. This one is, there's more sourness here on the fruit. The plum is much more soured. Sour cherry. But there is also an an old brandy characteristic to it as on the fruit wise because you get the yeah it's almost like brandy cherries sour plum caramelized blackberries blueberries Very light baking cinnamon, baking spices, older oak, clean peat, and the brine that I was picking up. There's a little brine in here as well, but it's not as brine heavy as this one was. This was driven into the pebbles, into the ocean, and the sea kelp. This one, it stays a little more on the shore. It's almost like what you smell on the shore, right? It's just it's those beach pebbles. 
and the clean burning peat. It doesn't get into creosote. It doesn't get into asphalt. It doesn't get even barbecue smoke. Clean burning peat on this one. All right. Well, that's the nose. All right, here we go. 2022 edition of Hardbeg 10. Oh, so much more vanilla. So much more eucalyptus and lemon oil. That's enjoyable on its own right. I mean, for what it is, it's still really, really nice. Okay, here we go on the taste. First sip, I'm always checking viscosity. Medium, maybe a smidge below medium. I wish it was a little more oily. Ah, but it is really nice. Vanilla cream. You get that nice fruit, that lemon oil. The um, This one is kind of like a caramelized cherries. A little bit of plum in there as well. Maybe even a little bit of a, like a raspberry compote in there. And then you start hitting that kind of mid palate where you start getting the spice kind of driving a little forward. The cinnamon's leading the way. A little bit of a white pepper in behind there. Hmm. Oh, big vanilla. That lemon oil, yep. As the spices creep up, you pick up that herbal tone. That lemon balm eucalyptus that I picked up on the nose is definitely coming through on the palate. Rolls over right here into the briny characteristics of those, again, minerality of the beach pebbles. Sea kelp in there. Yeah, I was hoping it would go towards a little more smoked fish or a little more oyster shells. I'm not getting a lot of that. That, again, the peat does definitely hit the barbecued uh, smoke realm. Overall, it's really enjoyable, very nice. At that price point, $50-ish, I think it's a really good buy. Do I think it deserves a lot of the really high accolades that it's been getting? Eh, you know, it's not the, I don't think it's the best Ardbeg 10 by far, but it's enjoyable, and again, I'm happy with it. I would, I'm not going to rate whiskeys. I don't typically do that, uh, but I know this one had been getting, like, high 90s or well mid 90s at least close to that and so I don't think it's there for me um, but it is enjoyable and at that price point I'm very very happy with it but let's go ahead and check it and compare it to the 07 all right here we go my goodness yeah oh my goodness yeah that's heavy. That's dense fruit. That's oyster shells as well. All right, here we go. Medium, solid medium viscosity, maybe even a little bit over. It enters your hit right away with this kind of a baked plums, uh, black cherries and blackberries little bit of raspberries, but they're all caramelized. They're all sautéed down with sugar. Good amount of brine early. Here we're getting a combination of not only just the beach pebbles, and this one was kind of leaning them a little more, and I think it was because of that herbalness that it reminded me of more of a sea kelp. This one is diving into oyster shells. That, that kind of minerality. The peat smoke, super clean. The mid palate on the spice component, good baking spice, but it doesn't get super aggressive. It just kind of fills out the whole whiskey experience. On the back end, you're starting to pick up a very, very, very clean, older oak profile, but then it's just that heaviness of the peat, the cleanliness of the peat. This is just pure burning peat. Kind of similar to what like Octomore will typically do. Clean burning peat, not going into the barbecued essence or barbecued smoked meat type territory. territory. Um, definitely, to me, this tastes older. 
even though they both carry 10-year age statements, you know, back in the day, they could have put in 12-year-old, 15-year-old barrels in here. Still call it Ardbeg 10 because that is the youngest whiskey component, but could have had older whiskey. Oh, that's just a great, great one. Mm. All right. I'm going to re-rinse. I'm going to go back to this L22 just to double, um, just to kind of re-verify everything really quickly for you. Yeah, the medium, touch under viscosity wise, but flavor wise, very enjoyable, totally different. They have transitioned. They have been doing, you know, probably younger casks in their blends, but they're doing a good job of it. And it's not like, you know, an inferior whiskey by any means. But I do love the herbal component. I do love the brine that is in here. I think it's a solid pickup. So if you see that out there and you're, you know, you're looking for an other whiskey at around $50, this is going to be a really nice pickup. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video review. Of course, I thank each and every one of my patrons for helping continue this channel as far as I'm self-purchasing these bottles so you're getting straightforward, honest reviews. If you want to help that cause, join us over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. Uh, but regardless, if you're watching that there or here on YouTube, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Keep leaving all those great uh, comments and I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day and cheers.